Now that we have this basic shape, we need to get it a little bit closer to the reference image. So if we go to the side view here, if we press Alt Z and tab into edit mode, we can see, I'll hit the two key to go to edge mode. We can see that we're a little bit off here on the top of the fender here, but we're really off when it comes to this out here. So we need to deal with that and this little bit that turns up. So let's start working on that. I'm gonna tumble around again and let's select, um, I'm just gonna select these here up on top and let's see if we can pull these up just a bit to get them in line with the reference image up here. I'll just pull that up just a little bit like this. Yeah, let's do that. And then uh, I could just grab these two and maybe bring these up just a little bit, just to round that off some. There we go. Now back here, ultimately these are gonna have to go all the way back, aren't they? They really stick out a little bit further than they are up on top. So if we go back to the side view, let's, uh, I'm just gonna hit G and start moving this back and maybe we could take these and move these back and down. I'm gonna move them out of here like this. Uh, let's grab these right here. And let's move these out like this. All right, so now that we've done that, let's think about this little turn up. <laughs> it's not a turn up, it's, it's, it's a piece that turns up. Let's do that. I will tab into edit mode. Let's uh, go to x-ray. And I think I need to take uh, these points right here and just slide them up a bit. I'm going to hit G two times and just slide it up about like that. There we go. And then if we select these two faces, now let's extrude these up. I'm gonna turn off the subdivision surfaces for just a moment to extrude these up. And so let's hit um, E and then I'm gonna press Z to move up in the Z axis. And let's just move up like this. Well, it didn't really, I'll hit Z again. There we go. And let's just move it up to about here. And now we need to collapse these points. Let's do that. Let's take this and this, press the M key at last, this and this, M at last, this and this, M at last. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's turn our subdivisions back on again, right over here, see how we're doing. Okay, we've got this little indentation or this little piece, and that's good. Now let's just take this, and I'm gonna move it up to here. We can take this guy and move it down like this, and we can begin moving these up, back up in place too. Looks like they're okay. There we go, all right, let's take a look. All right, that's a similar kind of shape that we have here. Um, it, once again, needs some work. It always needs some work. So I'm gonna take these two points and just, uh, or maybe just this one, and hit G two times and slide it in and bring it up a bit. And what I'm doing back here is I'm really allowing the subdivision surface to give us these curves between these edges. Whereas up here, I really kind of drew them very close together to get that curve. Back here, I'm really allowing that subdivision surface modifier to give us that curve and see how that works. All right, let's go back. And uh, we're doing pretty good, I think. Let me grab this and move it forward just a bit. There we go. Okay. Recall that this is not the final exterior of the car. This is the smoothing mesh. And this will mainly be used underneath to provide smoothing. Um, let me turn up this to four over here and see how it looks. All right. Maybe I'll bring this forward just a bit like this. There we go. Yeah, I think that's getting there. So, all right, so we have this now. What about the back back here? We probably should work on that for just a minute. Um, let's take this and tab into edit mode and let's take a look at it all. 
go to the top view. All right, that's pretty good. But we're going to need to bring that down. Let me go to Control Alt Q to the quad view. And let's take a look at this. Maybe here I'll go to the back view. And let's hide the front of the car again so we can see it a little better. I'll just click and drag here and then hit the H key to hide that. Now we really need to bring this down to where the trunk should be here. So I will just Alt click. Excuse me, Alt click. Here we go. This and let's just bring it straight down like this. There we go. And this, we could probably bring this up some because look at this. That needs to come up some just a bit. And this down here could probably come up some like this. I think what we should do is bring this back and we should probably give it another extrusion here so we can get that curve a little bit better. I'll select these and let's extrude down E and bring this down like that. There we go. Now we have it in line with the trunk and in line with the trunk on the top. And we've got a better curve here now, I think. That's good. Let's try and extrude this down one more time. Let's hit E and pull this down, down to here. I'm going to turn off the subdivisions for just a moment so we can see it here without that. And I will scale it in the Z to flatten it up. So S, Z, and press the zero key to flatten that up. There we go. All right. Now let's close that up. Let's see what we can do about that. My guess is, is we should take these here and flatten these. S, Z, zero. Let's try that. And then we could take this maybe and hit G two times and move it down a bit. Then we're going to need another edge loop in here to connect up here. So I'll just add one right here. We'll see how that does once we turn on our subdivision surface modifier again. But I'm going to go ahead and close these up like this and like this. Let's see how that works. Okay, and let's turn it on and see how it looks. All right, not too bad. Let's go to the side view, take a look at it. All right, so we could maybe slide this up just a little bit and fix that curve there. We might be able to take these three right here and bring these down a bit because it can come down about like that. There we go. And this down here could come down like that. And we could also probably add another edge loop right down here to really kind of tighten this area up a bit. And let me grab these and bring these up so it just kind of angles there like that. Okay, let's take a look at it. All right, I think that's pretty good for now. We are going to have to do some work pulling these out, I think, and rounding this off a little bit. Let me bring back the rest by going to Mesh, Show Hide, Reveal Hidden. And so there we have the basic beginning of the smoothing mesh. And we're going to have to do some work to get it really to the point that it's correct. But the good thing is, is we can do that underneath the actual exterior of the car. So we can create the exterior of the car now, and we can shrink wrap those pieces to this, and then we can move this around to get the smoothing that we need. And the cool thing is, too, we can begin removing edge loops here to get it smoother. So for example, here, let me just um, select this edge and this edge. We don't really need these edges, right? It isn't really holding anything. We don't really need this edge or this edge or this edge because it isn't really holding too much here. We could probably get rid of this one and this one and this one, and that's about it there because they're not really holding anything any actual shape. 
But we didn't know that in creating it, right? We don't know exactly how many edges or vertices are going to be needed to get the shape that we want when we first begin. So we could take these. We could just hit the X key and dissolve edges. And there we go. Now we've got a better and smoother area in here and up here. In addition, we can begin looking at moving and spreading out some of the edges in here. But what we'll do is we'll do more of that after we get the external pieces. So in the next video, we'll begin selecting faces, duplicating pieces off of this to get our external parts of the car. And once they're shrink-wrapped to the smoothing mesh, we can add as many vertices, as many edges as we want, and really go crazy with the modeling, because ultimately it will always conform to the underlying smoothing mesh. So let's start on that next.